Good afternoon, Chairman Parker, members of the committee. Um, my name is Peter Callan. I am from Rome, Maine, and I urge you to reject the uh, proposed rules. In the past two years, the legislature has overwhelmingly recommended rejecting similar weakened rules, and I urge you to make the same wise decision. These existing rules are, in fact, a modest improvement in several areas to the last iteration that was uh, presented that I testified against in front of the ENR committee. Uh, testimony this morning indicates that the real issue is disparities between the 2012 law and the 1991 rules uh, and the existing Section 200 that's being proposed here. And really what's necessary, in my opinion, is a moratorium until all those things are straightened out. I hold a PhD from Princeton University in Civil and Environmental Engineering. I'm a retired professional wetland scientist and the co-author of a book chapter on arsenic geochemistry in a special publication at Geochemical Society. The title of the book is Water Rock Interactions, Ore Deposits, and Environmental Geochemistry. It's actually a reference for the mining industry on what happens when rock is exposed to water. Um, I have been an environmental consultant, primarily in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, where I used to design wetland systems to remediate contaminated groundwater and sediments, especially involving heavy metal pollution and acid mine drainage. I've seen firsthand the environmental damage caused when mining companies are allowed to mine using inappropriate techniques with inadequate regulatory oversight and it isn't pretty. I am not anti-mining. I am anti-mining with the wrong systems. Open pit mining for sulfide minerals is a technique that is suitable where the annual rainfall is measured in inches rather than feet. It is completely unsuitable in a state like Maine that averages over four feet of rain annually and has virtually no carbonate minerals to buffer the acid mine drainage that is inevitable when the mine tailings are exposed to air and water. Bald Mountain Site is a potential environmental disaster in the making that threatens significant Class A waters that harbor a native brook trout fishery that provides ecotourism jobs to hundreds of Aroostook County residents, recreation to thousands of Maine residents who come into this area to fish. Because of Maine's geology, these headwater streams such as Bald Mountain Brook Clayton Brook, Clayton Stream rather, are very low in alkalinity and particularly sensitive to acid runoff. Native trout are extremely sensitive to exposure to aluminum, copper, zinc, and arsenic that will inevitably be mobilized by the mining operations. Ore bodies at the Bald Mountain site in particular have extremely high arsenic, uh, up to nearly 3%, which is about as high as I have ever seen from a natural occurrence. I've seen spills and insecticide spills that were worse than that, but in terms of natural occurrence of arsenic, that is really off the charts. And that arsenic will be mobilized if it's exposed to air and water. It's a known human carcinogen, as one of the testifiers this morning talked about, the reduction in IQ in children. Uh, the companies that mine it need to be post an adequate bond up front to ensure water quality is maintained and inevitable cleanup that will be required comes at their expense and not the taxpayers. While the Irving Company is, complain is claiming that they will create 700 direct and indirect jobs, the majority of these jobs will go to Canadians, out-of-state residents with mining equipment experience conducting asset mine cleanup. Some of the successful mines, like the Eagle Mine mentioned this morning, we talked about the, the uh, computer engineers that are running that. There are not very many of those in Aroostook County sitting around waiting for this mine to open up, I can guarantee you. Um, the existing jobs that will be lost by the destruction of the native brook trout habitat will end up being covered by the taxpayers of the state of Maine. Historically, the mining companies have had an abysmal track record in cleaning up their sites. As soon as the price of gold drops, the LLC stands for Limited Liability, and every one of these companies is an LLC that did the mining, declares bankruptcy, and the taxpayer is left holding the bag. 
we need to look no farther than the Callahan and Mine in Brooksville to see where that happened. It must not be allowed to happen again. I ask you to reject the current proposal and direct the DEP to write more protective rules, not weaker rules. DEP should use a true stakeholder process to refine the rules and include representatives with expertise, environmental cleanup, mining safety, climate change, environmental geochemistry and water quality, in addition to the mining industry consultants. The proposed rules are completely inadequate for permitting mines that produce group A, that is acid producing uh, waste, especially in areas that can take class A and class AA headwater streams critical to our native brook trout and Atlantic salmon. The rules rely on inadequate measures to prevent exposure of these wastes to air and water, which is necessary to prevent acid mine drainage, and inadequate measures to buffer surface and groundwaters from contamination. Some of those are discrepancies between the existing law and the rules that were proposed, but they are there, and until they're solved, uh, it's not appropriate to pass these rules. Recent studies, such as the National Climate Change Ass National Climate Assessment of 2014, have identified changes in precipitation trends that show a 71% increase in heavy precipitation events in our region between 1958 and 2012. Earlier this summer, Somerset County, not far from here, got seven inches of rain in 24 hours. Earlier, uh, the picture that is floating around, hopefully you can look at it, shows some of the damage to roads that occurred after that one storm. Uh, those roads are what the mining access roads will be. They're dirt roads in the country, near the streams, uh, carrying loads of uh, contaminated ore, relying on 75 feet of undisturbed vegetation in your rules. Such a storm in a mine tailing area would be a disaster. As British Columbia found out uh, when the Mount Polly uh, tailing mine failed, Gold King had a tailing mine failure that was not due to weather, but contaminated four states when the acid mine rain engine and runoff left Colorado and went to New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona, who, by the way, are now suing Colorado for failing to uh, ensure mine safety. Uh, the Mount Pauly uh, accident, all three of those things I just mentioned happened since the last iteration that we did on these rules in 2014. Uh, just shouldn't be allowed in Maine. And I thank you for your consideration. I did hear some excellent ideas this morning from several people, including Representative Chapman and uh, Jim Boyle. Uh, I think that what really is needed here is a complete stakeholder process where you sit down with people from all aspects of the uh, problem who understand the problem, develop a system that allows you to do adaptive management with renewals, with points that you have to meet with independent third-party compliance inspections to ensure that they're, they're happening. Uh, right now, there's a lot of good language in the rules, but no specifics and no way of really ensuring it. You have, uh, you know, no permits required if the, uh, the exposure of uh, soil is less than 300 square feet. It doesn't say anything about how deep a hole you can take. You know, the mines, like Eagle Hill, Eagle, I mean Eagle Mountain, or Eagle Lake, go a thousand feet down. I, I think that the Bald Mountain site could possibly be mined safely with a, uh, with a mine like that, but not with a mine like what's being talked about and what's potentially approvable by, under these current rules. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I will be submitting via electronic means some more specific recommendations for the portions that are really inadequate.